What's up everybody? Welcome to the Brown House Experience. I'm D Brown and this is my beautiful and informational co-host Tia Brown and you are watching Channel 21 Pat TV on Can TV. I can't forget the other half of our team in the back in the coast Scott and Trey Brown. They are handling it on the ones and twos. If at any time you want to chime in and check us out online you can do so at www.cantv.org forward slash hotline. You can also call in and chime in with whatever you have to say at 312-738-1060. That is 312-738-1060. All right, we got a great show lined up for you guys today. Some nice special guests in the building. I'm going to go ahead and let my co-host Tia Brown take it away. Tia. So first, I hope you enjoyed that video we showed. That was from our Urban Engineering Night. We had book donations from Readers Ignite, which is one of our guests today. Mm -hmm. Her name is Carolyn. She has been so generous to Athletic Connection as well yes, as the Brown yes, House yes. Experience with donating books and getting literacy to our kids. So we're going to highlight her today. We also have the Hillside Hurricanes in the building. We have two. Gang, gang. Yes, we have two of the youth here, Delante and Mingo. And we also have Coach Tay. Is that fine? Coach Tay. He's he, Tay Butch. Tay he's Butch in the, in the building. He's in the building in the also. Building. So we have a lot of information to show. And we also have our neighbor to know, which is Eric Ruiz. He is from the Chicago Hope football it's team. We're going to learn right about there. what he's doing in the community to help yeah. out. So first we're going to start off with Carolyn and Readers Ignite. We're going to allow her to tell us more about her non-for-profit organization and what she's doing to promote literacy in our neighborhoods. Welcome, Carolyn. Thanks, Carolyn, for joining us. I'm glad you could come. Thank you, Tia, for having me. Well, first, can you tell us a little bit about your nonprofit, where it started, how you, how, what, where the idea came from, everything? Okay, so um, actually the start of it was back in 2010. I started looking for nonprofits to work with. I, I was interested in opening a children's bookstore. And so I wanted to work with nonprofits that were working on children's literacy. And I went hunting for them, and I wanted something that had a suburban component. Um, I'm in the suburbs, so um, I found a whole lot of nonprofits working on literacy and some working on children's literacy, but I didn't find a lot going on in the suburbs. So that's where I started kind of digging around. I looked nationally, and basically I didn't find what I was looking for. So um, I looked into starting my own uh, in 2012. So that was the start of it. So Readers Ignite, where did the title, the name come from? Um, it kind of speaks to the mission a little bit. So that's a very good question. Thank you. Um, I, as I dug around, I saw a lot of nonprofits that were working on helping children become better readers. Um, what I feel we're not doing a lot of is helping children get excited about reading. Yes. So to me, that's where the success is um, because that's then what will carry the youth through right. in I their agree. lives. I so agree. the idea really under Readers Ignite, why I chose that is to help light a fire or light the passion for reading within the children. And actually that's part of why I use athletics as much as possible. Yes. Yes. Because kids are excited about their sport, whatever that sport is. And I like I love connecting reading to that passion, whatever it is. Yes, and that was something that she did with Athletic Connection. She donated baseball themed books to their baseball camp last year. Was it last year? Yes. And it's been a couple of times. Yes. So she and all of the kids received books. So that's something that Carolyn does all the time to help out the youth. What are some major misconceptions that you found when in regards to literacy? Um, I think the biggest misconception is that there's a problem. Most people, a lot of people think that there isn't a problem with literacy in America. In fact, I've had recent college graduates um, even with sociology degrees that have literally said the words, oh, I didn't think literacy was still an issue in the States. 
and that to me is just inconceivable. We're at 43% of adults in America are estimated to read below a fifth grade reading level. And I think that that information really isn't out there. Um, for people who do know about it, they don't really consider the ramifications of that. Right. I agree. As a teacher, I know exactly what you mean. I have kids that are way below level in my class every year, and every year it seems to be getting worse and worse. So I totally agree. Have you seen a change since when you first started? Is it getting better as far as people uh, realizing that literacy is important, or do you see it getting worse? I think there's both sides of that. I think that... Um, there are people that uh, that they do, uh, there's programs that are starting in some libraries in some school districts to work on the literacy issue um, from different paths. Um, but I also think that, for instance, the handheld technology, that's going to wind up impacting us negatively. Um, the hand handheld technology is really working against early literacy skills. Yes. And I think that impact won't be felt for about eight to ten years. And that kind of goes with any challenges you face. The handheld technology mm -hmm. is taking over for the books. Any other challenges that you've seen? Um, honestly, people thinking that early literacy is worth funding. I think that it's. it seems like it's something that, um, again, goes back to because we're not really discussing this issue, um, it tends to get balled right into what's happening in the education world, what's happening in our schools, what's happening in this district or this district or with these teachers or this curriculum. And it's really, I keep trying to pull literacy off as a separate issue. It's a building block for our school system. And um, so that's really where that challenge sits. What's your biggest reward so far? So I know you've seen the smiling faces of the kids when you give them books and I they have, have the, their favorite book. What's your biggest reward thus far? The biggest reward um, are things like um, I, we just started a laundromat story time. Um, and that was really literally this past weekend. And there was a little girl that after we did the, the one book, she went over, there happens to be a bookshelf at this laundromat, and she went over with, there's, they leave toys out for the kids to play with too, and she took the shopping cart and she went over to the bookshelf and she put a book, one book in, and she brought that book back to me. And those sorts of things yeah. where it's, that's exactly what I'm trying to go after to yes. ignite that passion. Yes. So what do you all have coming up? So I know you had that last weekend. Anything coming up? Um, we're working to get corporations to con or, or buildings to consider doing book drives instead of food or coat drives for the holidays. Um, we'd like to see people give new books. New books have a lot more appeal yes. um, to everyone. And so we do a lot of new toys. I think that doing new books would help create change. Oh, I like that idea, a new book drive. Yeah, mm. so we're looking for places to host it. A lot of the buildings in the loop do things like that. They'll do food drives. So we're trying to um, reach, we've been reaching to building management, mm -hmm. um, trying to get them to do it. But also businesses can do it right in their lobby. Um, so that sort of thing. And, okay. and we also need volunteers for our laundromat story times. Okay, yes. So that's something else. What what are some things that you suggest parents can do to help their kids with literacy at home? They can have books available and they can read to their children. And even for parents who are um, not good readers themselves, mm -hmm. they can still facilitate reading. They can still help their child simply by opening a basic book and pointing to this is an orange here here's this is an apple they don't have to actually read the story I think a lot of people get discouraged because maybe they're not very good readers yes. themselves yes. and so um, they are hesitant to think that they can be part of the the building blocks and they certainly can okay do you have any suggestions for any children on things that they can do also to help with their literacy at home Continue have to read. A lot of teens um, watching. Definitely continue to read. Audiobooks help. I think mm -hmm. audiobooks are not as um, thought about or talked about. But um, for instance, a, a different way to use an audiobook would be to have the audiobook playing and then actually have the physical book in front of you. And so then that would allow 
um, children to, um, it's a substitute for having someone to actually mm -hmm. read the book to them. Um, and then they can see the words and, oh, these are how the syllables go. And actually the process of learning to read is a lot more complicated than we talk about. Yes, it's, I know. It's not an automatic <laughs> thing. Yes, yes. <laughs> now and you're a teacher you. for what I, grade? Fourth grade. I've fourth taught grade. third grade, fourth grade. I've also been a literacy uh, a literacy teacher, reading coordinator. I have a minor in reading, so I know exactly, exactly what you're going through, and I go through it daily with my students. So you're living it? Yes, every day. For 15 <laughs> years now, I've been living it every day. So how can people reach you if they want to know more about your nonprofit? They can reach through, um, we have we are on Facebook, mm -hmm. we have a website, they can reach, um, my cell phone number is 847-471-6277. They can email us at readers.ignite at yahoo.com. Um, so those are the basic ways. And Facebook, Readers Ignite? Yes. Yes, Facebook, yes. what about Instagram? Not there yet. I think we, we have one, but it's not being, I'm trying, I'm looking for interns. If anyone would like to intern, that's so volunteers. another way. Definitely we need volunteers. We, so. and, and we need people to spread the word that this is a real issue. Um, I'm just going to tag in here that the, the issue that we've started to really dig at and get out into people's awareness is um, the real very real number, it was released in 2016, that 42% of children six and under are not being read to in their homes and so we really need people on board and it doesn't have to take a lot of time you don't have to read stories if you don't want to we can work with any skill set and we it just need the people village it all does. hands on deck all That's hands on hand. deck Absolutely. hashtag Thank you so very much, Carolyn, for joining us. If you want to find out more about Readers Ignite, find them on Facebook. Also, readers.ignite at yahoo.com. At yahoo.com. So you can send those emails if you'd like to get involved. Again, thank you so much, Carolyn. I thank appreciate you. you joining us. And again, she has donated numerous books also to classrooms, my classroom, my school. She's donated books to all of the kids there. So she is a gem, and she is helping build literacy in our community. So she is someone to salute. Thank you again, Carolyn. You. So next up, we have our Hillside Hurricanes coming up for our AK Corner with Donnell. Check them out. All right, what's going on, fellas? I'm here with the, the Hillside Hurricanes, uh, two players off of the Kane Gang. Hashtag, here we go. All right, so first and foremost, let's go ahead and introduce you to our viewers out there. Tell me your names and your positions. All right, so I'm Delonte Butcher. I play quarterback and safety. Okay. Uh, my name is Mingo Nixon. I play wide receiver and outside linebacker. Okay. So you have Delonte and Mingo, right? What school do you guys go to? I go to Heritage Grove Middle School. I go to Lindop, Lindop Elementary. I hear you guys are a couple brainiacs, man. What's the grade point average so far? 4.0. 3.7. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right. All right. So tell me, how has the, the Hillside Hurricanes impacted your life? Um, it has impacted me a lot. It has molded me into a leader, like a great young man. Mm, a lot because it brought a lot of opportunities in my life. A lot of opportunities. Name one of those. Um, a lot of high schools coming out to us. That's great. That's great. Who are your role models and why? I would say LeBron James because he gives back to his community okay. and does a lot of things. Outstanding. Uh, I would say Antonio Brown because he's a leader. Antonio Brown and LeBron James. That's not bad on, on the role models for I'm picking those guys, all right? So, next we're gonna play a little game called Know Your Teammate. And you have a dry erase board in front of you. We, we always play a little game with our, our 
people we have on the show to kind of spice it up a little bit so it's a little hot seat. So what you're going to do right now is we're going to ask you four questions and you're going to write down your answer on your dry erase board. Once we get done, I'm going to ask you guys two questions apiece and see how well you know each other. Cool? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. All right. So we have our dry erase boards. Now, remember, keep your answer to yourself. Kind of cover it up a little bit. It's like a test. All right. First question is, who is your favorite professional player in any sport? And for the rest of the Hillside Hurricanes at home, watching, see how well you know your teammates up, up here. The second question is, what's your favorite song? Now, our third question for you guys is, what gets you fired up before each game? And the last question for you guys is, what is your favorite subject in school? All right, so we're finished up. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you guys two questions apiece. And I'm going to start with Delonte. You're the quarterback, correct? Yes. So quarterbacks go first. Go first. All right. What is Mingo's favorite professional player? Odell Beckham Jr. Odell Beckham Jr. Is that correct? Yeah. That's correct. That's pretty good, man. That's pretty good. All right. So, Mingo, what is Delonte's favorite song? Le uh, I think any song about NBA Youngboy. NBA Youngboy. All right. Is that true? Yes. That's it. <laughs> That's two for two. Two for two. All right, Delonte, what gets Mingo fired up before each game? Music. Music? Yeah. Is that correct? All right. What type of music? Um, Hip hop? Yeah. Rap? Okay. Okay. And for Mingo, the last question is, what is Delonte's favorite subject in school? Math. Math? Yeah. yeah I'm a math head too. Is that correct, Delonte? Yeah. All right. Bunch of math guys on home stage. So that's four for four. These guys know each other pretty well. So it was great having you guys all right, on the show tonight uh we are looking forward to watching you guys play this weekend right you just had a game yeah, uh last yeah. game this weekend tell me what happened we won 27 to 7. 27 to 7 the second round of the playoffs yeah, yeah. that's great man Make, be sure to check these guys out this weekend we'll have more information on our website and as well as facebook so you can check their game out on saturday so let's transition and check out three of their top highlights this year Welcome back. We have Coach Dante Butcher in the building right, of the Hillside Hurricanes, man. I'm glad to have you, man. All right, bro. Glad, all right, to, be all glad right. to be here. All right. So let's get into the questions that we have for you guys today. Tell me a little bit about your not-for-profit organization. Uh, Hillside Hurricanes started in 2014. Um, been going strong ever since. Okay. okay. So how important is athletics in our community? I think it's very important because it brings people together, mm -hmm. uh, teaches kids a lot of life lessons, Absolutely. Uh, teach them how to, you know, work with each other, you know, mm -hmm. teach them how to mm -hmm. take, uh, take, uh, take a, what am I looking for? I had a brain fart. Take orders, not orders, but, you know, mm -hmm. listen to someone older than them, telling exactly. them, you know, giving right. them instructions, you know, because, you know, I get it. our whole life, we, you know, 
it's a it's a it's a, it's a ladder. It's a ladder. It's a step ladder. So you know somebody's in charge. You got to take those uh, demands. So, uh, I definitely understand. Them a lot, though. I definitely understand. So is there anything that athletics can do to unify our community? Uh, I think so. I think it does a lot just by bringing people together. Like I said, bringing yes. people together, teaching them how to work together. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. And in the, in the era we in, it's a, it's a lot of me going on. Absolutely. And it should be a lot of we going on. Exactly. So exactly. That's 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 the main thing. Bringing people together, knowing how to work with your fellow person, fellow brother, sister. And that's really what the community is, man. So yeah. we have a caller right now. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and, and pause for a second and, and take this caller. Caller, go ahead. Oh, hi. Uh, this is Daniel Escobar. I just wanted to give uh, a good, a great shout-out to the Hillside Hurricanes, Coach Tay, from uh, Angel, Moises, and Sebastian uh, from the 10 and 6U uh, youth uh, teams. Well, we appreciate it. We appreciate it. A shout-out to the Kane game. Anything else you want to you wanna end up with? No, just that uh, it's a great program. Uh, I'm their uncle, and uh, my sister is uh, the safety coordinator, one of the safety coordinators, Amanda Rosas, and it's just a great program uh, to be a part of. Well, we want to thank you for calling in. We appreciate your call. All, All right, right there you. you have it, right, for the Hillside Hurricanes. All right, so uh, in the media, they kind of portray youth football as being unsafe. How do you mm -hmm. feel about that? I think it, depending on the way you're teaching it, mm -hmm. who, it depend, to me it depends on who's teaching it. Mm -hmm. It could be unsafe if you're not teaching the correct way. I totally agree. If you totally teach it agree. the correct way, it's pretty safe to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got on a helmet, you got shoulder pads mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. you know. And different ways of tackling too, right? Diff hey, take the head out of the tackle. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, we roll it. Okay. So, what does uh, your organization do for to build relationships off of the football field? Just being a presence in the community, uh, being seen in the community. Okay. Um, you know, as far as being uh, in the community, okay. you just got to go out there. It's, it's something that you just got to dive in. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And just be a presence. Bring your leadership skills. Everybody has something to bring to the table. Exactly. Exactly. So what's coming up for you guys that we should be looking out for? Uh, we have a championship game this weekend, uh, November 10th, which is a Saturday, 515, Addison Trail High School. Um, we're going for our fifth championship wow. as an organization. Wow. Uh, my players are going for their third straight. Okay, that's pretty as good. As far as state. That's pretty good. Um, yes. The last four has been in Pop Warner. We moved to UIFL this year. Okay. Um, and we're looking for our first in UIFL. Okay. Okay. So how can the supporters and viewers reach you for more information? Uh, the best way would be uh, through Facebook. Um, okay. Hillside Hurricanes, Youth Football and Cheer. And then we have an Instagram, the official Hillside Hurricanes. Okay. So let's be sure to check them out this weekend uh, as they play Saturday. What is it, the third round of the playoffs? Uh, championship. It's championship a championship round. That's championship round. We're in this, we go so, to Florida Nationals. Man, and that's a great accomplishment right there. So be sure to check them out this weekend and show, show your support. Uh, we do have a caller. Uh, we can go ahead and take that caller right now. Caller, go ahead. Hello, how you doing, guys? Oh, we all What's right. What's going on? I just want to get a shout out to the Hurricanes, man. Y'all doing good this year. Go big and go get that ring. So that's a shout out to you guys to go get that ring. And we definitely going to get it. All right, all right. So there you have it. We have uh, Coach Butcher in the building. We have Mingo Nixon and Delonte Butcher. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll take another caller. We have time for another caller. Let's right. go ahead. They call in there for the Hurricanes. Let's get it. Caller, go ahead. Hello? Yes. Hey guys. Yes. What's going on? Go on? My name is My name is Coach Wynn. I have a question. Yes. Uh, Coach Butcher. Yes. Um, who was the, in your opinion, best coach that you've worked with along the years of uh, coaching and being with the young men? Hmm. <laughs> well, it might be Coach Wynn. 
<laughs> that's is a good that answer, answer right now. For? <laughs> that's a good answer. Do you want the truth or you want the answer that, you know, makes you feel good? I think we got to roll no, with no, that no, answer no. right now. <laughs> <laughs> Good looking. Well, we want to thank you for calling in, Coach. Uh, you guys got a great organization, <laughs> man. That uh, we want to wish you the best of luck, especially this weekend. Uh, let's let's see if we can get out and support the Hillside Hurricanes on Saturday at uh, Addison Trail High School. Correct. Addison Trail High All School, right. five fifteen. At five fifteen. So we're gonna wrap it up right now with some high school scores from this past weekend. Go ahead, take it away. In the IHSA football playoffs, two Chicagoland teams will go on to the quarterfinals. In 6A action, number four seeded Phillips defeated Prairie Ridge by the score of 24 to 19. They will go on to play number one seeded Prairie Grove. In class 7A, number one seeded Simeon defeated Lincoln Way West in a shootout 48 to 35, and they will play number eight seeded Nashville. In the IHSA football playoffs, two Chicago. We hope you enjoyed those scores. Can you tell us a little bit about those scores that we just saw? <clears throat> well, those those two scores, we have two teams going into the quarterfinals of the playoffs and Simeon and Phillips. We want to wish those teams the best of luck uh, going into the playoffs. And we want to also wish uh, the Hillside Hurricanes the best of luck this weekend as they take on um, a team from Milwaukee. Ah. So next, our last thing for today is our neighbor to know. We can't forget about Eric Ruiz. He is an awesome young man. He he wrote, I dedicate my weekends to football and kids. I am a team coach for a 9U and 10U football team for the Layton Bears. I love to coach so I can see the players improve in their game, mental toughness, and physical abilities. I don't only help coach, but I hang out and play video games with them at home. They love that Fortnite and football. So I try my best to do it with them whenever I can, just for some more fun. I also have a job in an ice cream shop in Norwich. I never got ice cream that much as a kid, so I thought it was a good opportunity to give what I never got as a kid. Giving back to the community and youth is an important part of my life. I love the satisfaction of helping people and seeing the smiles of people that will be big one day. Eric Ruiz, he is our teen neighbor to know. Yes, and shout out to Eric Ruiz, man. I know that kid, he's a, a great kid, an outstanding kid. And also shout out to the Leiden Bears, who also trained with us uh, over the spring and over the summer. And they're looking to have a great season next year as well. So we hope you enjoyed today's show. We have a lot of things coming up in the next few weeks with the holidays coming up. Yes. So please continue to tune in, call in. Thank you for all of the callers, all of the, the viewers that watch every week. We appreciate you yes. all. Yes. So we'll catch you all next week. Yes, and for the AK Corner, we are looking for highlight of the year at the high school level and the youth level for football. All right, so if you have those highlights, chop them up and send them in so we can get to playing them. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week. All right. Peace.